Okay, so we can now set our languages. Um, what we'll do now is actually translate these texts now. So pretty exciting. Um, let's go back to our browser. And if you go back to the Rapid API website um, on the endpoints tab, you'll see we have uh, some example code we need to call the translate functions. So what we can do is essentially copy all this code and it should work. Now we're going to use Axios here. You can change it back to, uh, there are other methods like fetch or something like that, but we'll use Axios. So in order to do that, we need to actually install that library. So I'll press Control C on my server to stop it. And then I'll just run npm install Axios and let that install. And then we can essentially use that code. So what I'll do before I copy it in home screen, what I'm going to do is underneath that, um, that use effect block, which I just collapsed, uh, I'm going to go underneath there and create a uh, function. So const on submit and set this to uh, oops, equals use callback. Uh, so, so it's use callback block and put an arrow function in there. And then in there, we'll just um, paste all this code. So I can click copy code there and it'll copy it all right there, copy to clipboard. Go back to my uh, text editor and I'll, let me just fix the spacing. Uh, oops. And this now should work. It will, of course, translate the um, text hello world and the to and the from languages set there, but we can update them very soon. Uh, but let's just check if this works. Once it works, it should just log the response. So if I save that, I'll extend the terminal. Oh, I, need to re I need to start this by running npm start. Uh, this should work. Oh, no, we haven't hooked the submit button up yet. So just before it works, let's take that on submit and scroll down to the submit button, which is in the input container block, we have this touchable opacity. Uh, let's just set the on press on that. Move on press equals and just set on submit like that. So give that a save. Oh, I haven't started this properly yet. That should set. That should uh, start up. If I press R to restart that, it will restart the app for me. And hopefully, we'll see a translation then when we press the submit button. Okay, so we've got an error about the use callback. We need to make sure we, we import that. So make sure you import use callback from uh, React right there. Give that a save. Oops. Okay, cool. So don't forget, this, this is disabled until we type in the text box. So clicking it won't do anything yet. If I type something in there, this text isn't used yet, of course, but it now, now the button's enabled. If I press this, we get the translation result in the uh, in the terminal. How exciting! So we've got the original text that we typed in, or sorry, or that we sent. We didn't type it in. Um, we've got the translated language too, and also the translated text itself. So, hola mundo. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, let's work on actually using our correct values here. So instead of that, we can use our state variable, which was entered text. So we can put entered text in that text part right there. Two can just be language two. And then from can just be language from. Language from. Um, oh, we need to set our dependencies on this use callback block. So I will go down to here after the um, curly brackets. Uh, and I'm going to set the dependencies. Um, so inside square brackets, we've used these state variables. So anytime these variables change, we want to re render this function. So enter text, uh, language to and then language from. So anytime any of those variables change, it will uh, basically recreate this function for us. Uh, give that a save. And then now we should be able to enter some text in there. So what time is it? If I press that, should get something in the console. We do. Keller still. My, uh, my French from high school is failing me right now, but that looks about right. Uh, and you can change the language too. So uh, I can set this to, oh, what am I going to, in fact, I don't speak another language. I don't even know why I'm looking for <laughs> other languages here, why I'm carefully selecting my language. Let's just do German. Uh, I'll press that. And we get this, which I <laughs> have to believe is right. Well, I have no idea if this is right or not. Um, could be totally wrong for all I know, but I'm going to trust that it's right. Uh, so there we go. We can enter our, um, our text and we can translate to whatever languages we want here. But I don't want to keep this code here. I'm going to extract this into a separate function. So in the file explorer, I'll go to the utils folder and I'll create a new file called translate.js. And this can be where our translation function goes. So I'm going to take that whole uh, block of code right there and I'm going to stick it in here. I'm going to say uh, export const um, translate equals 
um, and it's going to take three variables. It will take a text, uh, it will take um, a language, oops, language from and uh, language to, and it will be an arrow function, and I'll just paste that in there, uh, and I'll fix the tabbing. Uh, but what I'm going to do though is actually uh, take this response. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to await it. So I'm going to say uh, right here where we're doing Axios stock request. I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to say um, const response equals await Axios stock request. Now because I've added the await, I need to change this to an async function by just putting async up there. Uh, let me make this a bit bigger for you. So this will now contain the uh, response object, but because we're awaiting it, we don't need a then block, so we can get rid of that then block entirely. We'll keep the catch, but we don't need a then block. Um, and then outside of that, well underneath that I should say, what I'm gonna do is say if uh, response um, dot status, this would be the status of the response, is not equal to equal to 200, because you'll see in here we get, um, we get a uh, status which is 200 if it's a successful response. So we know if it's not 200, it wasn't successful. We can just console.log response, which should contain some error or something, I hope. Uh, and then we can just throw a new error. Uh, we can just write whatever you want. Translate call, oops, call failed. Response status. Uh, and then we can just set this to response.status. So that should give us a bit of a clue as to what the issue is. Uh, and outside that if block, it means, if we get to here, it means it was successful, so we can simply return um, response.data, which uh, if I show you in here, um, is just this part right here, this, this, whole, this whole object. So that's what we're returning, basically. Okay, cool, so there's our translate function. If I save that now, I'll go back to the home screen. Oh, actually, I need to update uh, the var the values we used for it. So in the translate function, uh, we have these parameters. So we need to uh, we've got language from, language to, and entered text is just going to be text. All right. So that, now that should be fine. Uh, cool. So let's just call that function. So we can say const const result um, equals await, and then just call the translate function. So that will import from there. So make sure you've got that. And then we need to specify the text, which is uh, entered text, uh, the language from, which is, of course, language from, and then language to uh, is language to. Make sure you got those the correct way around. So because we're awaiting this, this needs to be an async function. So make sure we add the async keyword there. But also, because this translate can throw an error, potentially, we're going to uh, put it inside a try catch block. So uh, before we call that, I'll just write my try catch block like this. And I'm going to move that call inside the try block like that. Cool. So now if it throws an error, it will be handled here. Uh, so I can just say console.log error. Now underneath there, we can say if uh, there was no result. So if there wasn't a result, um, we'll say set a result text to an empty string. Result text, of course, is this text that will be in there. Uh, so if it failed, we'll just clear this essentially and set it to empty. And then we'll simply return. We don't do anything else. Now, if it gets underneath this if, uh, if statement, it means result is fine. So we can work on actually getting that translation result. So const um, text result uh, equals result dot. We've got this translated text property here. So we can make sure we access that. Uh, dot translated text because you know just to remind you this is the object we're going to get back so we're accessing the translated text property and inside there they have this uh, key right here and that is just the two keys so whatever that two key is that is what it is there so uh, we can just access that so translated text and then in square brackets I'll put um, result dot two so we're accessing that two field that you just saw so that should now contain the text result so we can simply set result text to text result. Cool, so let me give that a save and uh, I can translate something. If I press, what time is it? Should enter it right there, cool. Uh, and I can change that to something else. Uh, Arabic, press that, see what we get. 
and that which I have no idea if that's right or not. But like I said, I have to believe all this is correct. Okay, what we'll do real quick is set a loading indicator on there because when you press it, um, there's a period of time where I could press it again technically. I'm not going to, but it, it would it would submit another request. So we'll create a, another state variable at the top. This will be is loading, and we'll set we'll call this set is uh, loading, and this will the initial value will be false. It's not loading when the page first loads, uh, and then inside the on submit we're gonna first we'll set is loading to true and then after the catch block we're going to add a finally block uh, and we'll set is loading to false so the finally um, I can't remember if I said this yet but the finally will just uh, always run so um, no matter if we do the try or the catch or we return early, uh, it will always run the finally block. So after all of that has been worked out, it will uh, run that and set is loading to false again. And then we can simply use that variable uh, down here. Uh, if I scroll down to my input container, we have this touchable opacity where we have this ironicons element. Um, we're gonna just create, add a uh, curly braces above that. And we'll say is loading um, and a question mark, so this is the conditional statement, uh, a ternary operator, and we'll say activity indicator, so import activity indicator from React Native, uh, be a self-closing element, and we'll set the size to uh, small, size small, and then color can just be um, colors dot primary. And after that, I'll put a colon, and then I'll move this uh, ionicons element up there. Get rid of that and put it in here instead. Oops, I'll fix the spacing as well. There, I'll tab this across as well. So I've just moved that inside of here. So now, if it's loading, it will render the loading spinner. If it's not loading, uh, it will render this, which is just the button. So uh, the last thing to do here is to... Um, make it so that the on press, instead of being on submit, will only be on submit if it's not loading. So we can say is loading, uh, if it is, we'll say undefined, undefined, uh, otherwise on submit. So if it's loading, on press will be undefined, clicking it won't do anything. If it's not loading, it will just be on submit. I think we're good. So let me save that. Let me enter some text. Hello, I love race cars. Now I'm going to change this to some of the language that I might recognize in the slightest. So French. Uh, and then I'm going to press this and you see it goes to a loading spinner. And then once it's done, it goes away again. So pretty cool. And also I just noticed the uh, this button here, although it doesn't do anything yet, has uh, enabled once there's text in there. Pretty cool.